you know, when Sunday Swap launched, I mean, didn't you guys have like, you know, 150,000 users on the site in the first day? And uh, the blockchain was was slowed, you know, at least for a couple <laughs> of weeks after that. And fortunately, the network parameters changed, changes, they came, you know, so then the blockchain allowed for, you know, more transactions. And with the Vazel hard fork coming up soon, uh, there's even going to be some more throughput there as well. So with the Vazel hard fork, um, you know, Sunday Swap, uh, scoopers, what they actually do is they take a few different swaps and they batch them together into one transaction. Uh, right after the Vazel hard fork, are users going to see any upgrades to Sunday Swap, or is that going to take a little bit more time before those upgrades come? Yeah, so Vassal brings a lot of really exciting things. Um, probably the one that I'm most excited about is script references, uh, which means uh, right now, every time you build a transaction that involves a smart contract, you have to include that smart contract in the transaction. And a transaction can only be 16 bytes, and so like 90% of the space in a transaction is taken up by those scripts. Really? 90%? So, yeah, in some cases. Wow. Um, and, you know, so... It, it was the kind of thing that leading up to our launch, you know, uh, we were trying to save just 37 bytes because that would allow us to get in another escrow in those batch transactions. So it, it can be really like uh, um, thin margins. Um, and so by moving those and storing them on chain, but then just referencing them, kind of calling back to them when you execute the transaction, you can save a lot of space, which... One allows our transactions to be bigger and fit in more uh, swaps, but also allows us to kind of play better with other DApps that are launching. Because now you have now you can fit ten different DApps' transactions in the same block. Um, but all of that being said, I want to kind of temper people's expectations, right? Um, so these features are not backwards compatible in that they can't be used on existing smart contracts. Um, and so you have to upgrade to Plutus V2, which means that all your smart contracts change, which means that you need a new audit, which means that, you know, for a DEX, you need to bridge that liquidity somehow, you know, either convince people to migrate over or use governance to upgrade it, something like that. Um, and so much like when we launched Alonzo and there weren't any dApps immediately, and it took some time for those to release... The same thing will happen with any of these big hard forks is the capability will be enabled on chain, right? And there will be some projects that now are like have been waiting to launch. And so you'll see them go live. I um, mean, that's great. I'm super excited for them. But for kind of established projects, um, you might see that take a bit more time, mm -hmm. um, especially if, you know, the like Sunday Swap, they're focusing on different things. Um, so like, for example, we're focusing right now on governance so that the Sunday community can vote. And one of the first things that we're going to have the community vote on is, um, you know, should we focus on a complete rewrite of the smart contracts with a ton of new features and release that all at once later down the line? Or should we do kind of a minimal upgrade to Plutus V2, get everybody to migrate over, and then potentially have to do a second kind of liquidity Migration. bridge event in the future, right? And so that's an important decision that, the community can make about the protocol that um, uh, through our governance portal. That's honestly a very bad experience, one for the developers and one for users. I know that's not coming from Sunday Swap. That's the protocol as a whole. Um, you know, think about it from a developing perspective. You know, audits are very expensive. It's very expensive to pay somebody to write smart contracts. So, um, is this gonna, is this something that's going to happen forever? You know, moving forward. Or is Vazel just such a big upgrade that this has to happen? Or are we going to be looking at Plutus V3 another six to eight months from now? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. Um, something about uh, kind of blockchain and smart contracts as code is inherently immutable, right? Um, so uh, a lot of times, like the IOG developers will make explicit choices for things not to be backwards compatible because of the like subtle implications of, well, what happens if there's uh, a subtle nuance that the smart contracts weren't audited under and those changing environment conditions, right? So what if these one of these new Vassal features introduces a bug into a smart contract that 
you know, was designed under it in a different environment. Yeah, that's already um, and been so, audited and tested. And then now you have all of these other variables that are then added right. into the situation. And, and even if you think that there's no possible way, you know, we've seen very subtle, very uh, non-obvious bugs being released. And so they have to be very, very, very careful about any changes they make. And so the safest thing is to kind of make that clean cut. Um, and so, you know, something about the nature of smart contracts in general being immutable and being... Um, you know, code as law uh, seems to imply that um, this kinds of backwards compatibility uh, um, is like at odds. They're they're at tension and conflict. Um, that being said, I think you will see uh, over time um, kind of DApps adapt to this and develop design patterns that make it kind of more modular and easier to upgrade pieces without um, kind of disrupting the whole right. Yeah. Um, and so we attempted to do some of that with Sunday swap and, um, it may or may not work, uh, kind of for an upgrade seamlessly. Um, but you know, we'll see. Yeah. That's, um, you know, from someone who's writing smart contracts and working on building a protocol, it's, it's kind of nerve wracking to me because of the cost of the audits and the cost of the contracts. And another thing that that's actually happened with was Cardano native tokens, uh, you know, we actually had the Mary hard fork that allowed Cardano native tokens on Cardano before we had Alonzo. And when Alonzo came, uh, you essentially had to mint entirely new tokens to get the capabilities of, you know, smart contracts with tokens. And uh, that's a hard problem. You know, imagine if you mint your tokens in, you know, March right after they release and you have them in the hands of, you know, thousands of users. Well, now you're screwed. You don't get that capability unless you mint an entirely new token and create a contract and bring in all of those users' tokens. So, yeah, that's that's definitely a very hard problem to solve. But I, I completely understand your argument there about uh, immutability and uh, the different variables that may come into play. So, Sunday Swap has been, uh, you know, working on a governance portal, you know, for the community to allow other businesses to, uh, you know, have governance. Uh, governance is very important, especially in Cardano, and there isn't a lot of good tooling for governance currently. So could you explain, you know, why you guys made this governance portal and what utility it offers the community or projects that want to use it? Yeah. Um, so one of the kind of key components of the Sunday protocol um, is this notion that its community is going to decide kind of the future of the protocol. Um, we, I like to think of it as kind of a boat that we built, but then we pushed off into the ocean, right? And it's no longer ours. Um, we're a contracting company that is building and maintaining some of the, the off-chain infrastructure for it. But the protocol really um, is owned by um, the, the Sunday Swap community and the holders of the Sunday token. Um, I say that, but that's, you know, a little bit of a lie because... Um, Right now, there's no way for those holders of the Sunday token to express their voice and to to actually mm -hmm. vote on things and propose upgrades and stuff like that, right? So we're in this on-ramping period where we're trying to make that true. And so um, uh, as part of that, we've been working really hard on building um, a governance portal. And on that journey, we you know looked at a bunch of different solutions and, and really settled on one that we're really proud of. Um, and then we thought, well, there's lots of other projects building on Cardano and not all of them have the resources to go through all of this to build their own governance solution. Um, and so we're also offering this as a business to business solution. So you, you'll you start to see other projects that are, you know, want to hear the, the voice of their community um, and are using kind of the same technology that underpins the Sunday governance portal um, for, for their governance. Um, have you had a chance to check it out yet? I actually haven't. Been too busy well, working on the rare um, bloom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we have a few minutes now. You want to show kind of um, your audience how easy yeah. it is to vote? Yeah, let's jump into it. I'm actually really excited for this. Um, you know, I'm, I'm building Atrium and, you know, it's a DAO and governance is at the core of what we want to build. However, users need to make a decision, uh, you know, before we have the actual protocol built, you know, because we want users to have input. Uh, so from my perspective, this is very useful because we don't have to build out our own governance portal or even have a working protocol or token yet, but still allow our users to have a say in the future direction of the protocol early on. 